Hi everyone and welcome to my presentation. I, I, will, I would like to present one of my paper entitled uh, Paid and Hypothetical Time Preferences are the same, Lab, Field and Online Evidence. This is a joint work with Pablo Brañas, my supervisor, Antonio Spin and uh, Ancho Sanchez. So let's move on. So patience and time discounting is, uh, is becoming a major topic in economics. Patient refers to the preference for larger rewards in the future over smaller rewards in the present. Uh, while time discount refers to the utility loss of any reward which is not uh, obtained immediately. And also in both definitions are correlated. Patient individuals display a lower time discount than in patient individuals. So in economics, we can say that our both measure are the same. It also there is evidence that time, time discount is correlated with good behavior. For example, we have that it's positive correlated with education outcomes, also with cognitive abilities, income, saving, uh, pro-social behavior, and also is, is positive correlated with productivity, GDP growth, uh, and human capital accumulation. And it's also negative correlated with unhealthy behaviors, criminal behaviors, divorce rates, etc. So there is an increased interest in, 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 in studying the consistency of intertemporal choices and also on intervention that can foster patients. So in the literature are two commonly uh, method you, you, I two methods that is commonly used in the literature. We have one is the MPL or multiplied list designed by Colero and Williams. And we also have the convex time budget or CTV designed by Andrioni and Sprenger. In both methods, a subject need, a need to choose uh, whether they prefer an, a, small, an, a smaller amount of money uh, earlier or a, a, a later but larger amount of money in the future. The difference between both methods is that the CTV is a continuous measure of the, of the MPL. But in experimental economics, all we know that the use of monetary incentive is a must. However, there is some uh, uh, papers, especially field research, uh, that use hypothetical decisions. Just to name a few, we have the paper of Ashraf et al. 2006, the paper of Goldstein, Kadina Keys, and also the paper of Domen et al. And in all of this paper, uh, the decisions were hypothetical. That is, they do not pay to, to, to subject. And probably is because uh, every subject needs to be painted at a different moment of time, and this increased logistic cost. Also, implementing in real incentives in time discount tasks can be challenging. We need to maintain constant the transaction costs between the, the, the earlier and the later payment. Uh, we also need to reduce the uncertainty of future payment. That is, if people doesn't believe that you are going to pay, probably they are going to choose everything uh, uh, today or tomorrow. Also, you need to avoid financial arbitrage. And also, you need to be careful uh, with inflation. For example, if you go to, to do a field experiment in Argentina where the inflation rate is 50%, probably the subjects are going to choose everything. Uh, 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 they are going to choose the earlier option. There is also additional problems. For example, if you are going to measure a time discount in children, you need the parental permission in order to pay real money. Or And also there is a problem with the information disclosure. You need to match the decision of, of, of subject with the with personal information, for example, bank accounts and other things, in order to make the, the, the payments. So, our research question is: Are choices over hypothetical rewards equally informative as incentivized decisions? So, our paper wants to answer these questions. However, this question is not you. There is lab evidence. Uh, that show that a uh, hypothetical and real incentivized decision yield the same results. 
uh, except for the paper of Color and William, that they find a, a marginal significant difference. But this paper, this lab evidence, are within subject uh, designs. They lack they lack power and um, and also there are no balance between the treatment groups. We also have a field evidence, for example, the paper of uh, of Diego Ufal and Harrison et al. 2002 that show that there is no significant difference between hypothetical and real and real decisions. But in this uh, in this paper, for example, the 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 payment mechanism was not the main research goal of the paper. Finally, we have the, the, the paper of Falk 2006 that they found that hypothetical and incentivized measures were correlated and predict out of lab behavior. However, without a more systematic and robustness and robust ana analysis, such conclusion probably is too premature. So, uh, our paper wants to fill this gap in the literature and we want to quantify the impact of hypothetical versus real rewards in time discount tasks. We also uh, measure the impact of another payment mechanism used generally uh, used in the in the literature, which is the the bris, the bris mechanism the between random incentivized subset. That is, you pay only a fraction. So we also measure the impact of this uh, of this payment mechanisms. So in order to answer our research question, we, wrap, we run three experiments. A lab experiment in Seville with, once, uh, with 120 observations, a lab in the field in Nigeria with 721 observations, and online, an on, uh, online experiment in across Spain with 637 observations. So the experimental design in the field and in the lab was simple. Each subject in the in the sample was randomly assigned to one of the three treatments. So we have the treatment where subjects were paid for real, which is R. We have the treatment with where subjects were paid with a probability of one over ten, which is the the breeze treatment or, or B. And we have the treatment where uh, subjects were not paid, that is the hypothetical treatment or H. We use the real group as a baseline group, no, because uh, is, is, is the golden rule in, in experimental economics. So we compare each treatment with the real, we compare the, the breeze and the hypothetical treatment with the real groups. Then we have the online experiment, which the, which the design was uh, different. In the online experiment, we only compare, uh, compare hypothetical versus breeze treatment. And we also analyze the robustness of hypothetical decision to different features. So we follow a two by two by two by two between subject design. So we have, we randomly uh, assign one of the treatment, B or H. Then we, uh, we also randomize the other between the short and the long term task that we are going to see the, the, in a few moments. And we also randomize whether subject play games before or after the time discount. And we also randomize whether they play uh, pay games or, or, or not using a breeze mechanism in the, in the game. I'm, in the result, I'm going uh, to show only the, the analysis of the robustness of hypothetical decision because it's, I, probably I, I'm going not to have a, enough time to show everything. So this is the summary of the experimental design across experiment. And probably the, mass, uh, the principal difference between the experiment is that in the field, we use 62 enumerators that the enumerator were, uh, we train enumerator in order to make the survey in, in different households. So this is the balance in, in the lab. We can see that there is no difference between the hypothetical and the real groups. And we also don't have difference between the breeze and the real groups. We only have here a, a marginal significant difference that if we correct the p-value using the von Ferroni method, uh, this difference is not longer significant. And again, we have the same for the field. And again, we have this uh, 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 significant difference. But again, if we correct using the von Ferroni method, this difference is no longer significant. So in the lab and in the field, we have uh, 
the three treatments are, are balanced. Also, in the, in the online experiment, we have that the hypothetical and the bridge treatment are balanced. These, these are small, are marginal significant difference that if we correct using the one pronoun method are not longer significant. So in order to measure time discount, uh, we use an MPL task where participants made a total of 20, the, of 20 binary choices. That means they need to choose between a, a earlier amount of money or a later but larger amount of money. The first decision, they need to choose between a non-delay option versus one month delay options. And in the second, uh, in the second block of the, of the time discount task, they need to decide whether they prefer one, amount, one month delay or versus seven month delay option. This is the MPL you see in each, in each experiment. We can see that the sooner, the sooner uh, payoff is always fixed and the later payoff increased by the same monthly interest rates. The only difference between, uh, between across experiment is that we use different uh, starting points. So we use the switching point in each block in order to estimate the parameters of a quasi-hyperbolic uh, discount function. So we focus on four measures that we call outcomes variables. We have beta, which is the short-term discount factor. Then we have delta, which is the, the long-term discount factor. And we also have the number of later allocation in the short-term task and the number of later allocation in the long-term task. This means this is for the first blocks in the first 20, 20 uh, sorry, in the first 10 decisions. And this is the number of later allo allocation in the second 10 decisions. And we also, in the last two variables, we use uh, all the samples. That means that we add the subject that made inconsistent choices. These are the uh, summary statistics of the discount factors. And we can see that the field in Algeria, people is, is more impatient than, than in the lab, also in, than in the online experiment, which is in line with, with some literature. So let's go to the results. These are the results from the lab. These are OLS estimation, but we also run interval regression and we also make a, a equivalence test. Uh, but I'm going to, to show only the OLS estimation. We have columns three, four, and six, and seven, and eight at controls. And we have beta, delta, we have beta and delta and the number of later allocation and the number of, of, of later allocation in the long term. We can see that the dummy, the edge dummy, has no imp significant impacts on the outcomes variables. And also the bridge treatment, the, the B dummy, has no impact, uh, significant impact on the outcome variables. We only have here a marginal, uh, marginally significant difference. But when we add the control, we can see that it's no longer significant. And this is for the number of later allocation in the short in the short run task. So the result from the lab uh, are that we don't find difference between real and hypothetical choices, and there are also no difference between real and bridge choices in the lab. We also run variance ratio tests in order to see if hypothetical or bridge uh, choices increase the variance of response compared to the real to the real group, and we don't find a, we don't find a, a significant increase in the variance. So we can say that in the lab, real and bris um, and the bris choices uh, doesn't increase. They don't increase the, the the variance of response. Then we have the result from the field, and we follow the same uh, analysis regressions. So we can see that the, EH, the, the hypothetical dummy, it has no significant impact on the outcome variables, but the B dummy, the bridge dummy, we, we see that has a significant effect over delta and over the number of later uh, allocation in the long-term task. So 
the result from the from the field, we can say that there are no difference between real and hypothetical choices in the field. However, uh, we also find that in the variance ratio test, hypothetical decision display a larger variance in the long so in the long in the long term only in the long term. And we also find that the breeze versus real choices generate high long term patients, and also the breeze increase the variance of response over the long term. If we go to the result from the online experiment, remember that we here we analyze the robustness of, of the robustness of the hypothetical decisions to different features. No, so here we we consider only the hypothetical treatment groups, and we can see here the different damage and the interaction term for the different features. So we have gain first, which is uh, which show a uh, significant coefficient, especially, especially in, bit, in beta and in the number of, of later allocation in the short task. And we can see that the interaction between games first and pay games is mean that they play the game first and with real money is not significant. So it's only matter that they play uh, games first. And then we have that the if we Randomize the order of the short or long of, of or the long task. Uh, there is a, there is no significant effect. This is marginal significant, but when we add the interaction terms in column two, is not longer significant. And we also have uh, the paid gains, the dummy for whether they play games with real money or not. That is not is is not significant in general. We only have that is significant here in for the long for the long term task, but when we add when we add the interaction term, it's no longer significant. No, so the result from the online experiment is say hypothetical time preferences are rows to difference within task order, is mean between the long and and short task, and to whether other tasks are incentivized or not. But uh, we find that. Uh, especially in the short term, the patient is larger for the time discount task if came after other experimental tasks. Remember, uh, uh, came after the games. So, all in all, we find that uh, time preferences uh, measured with an MPL are the same for paid and hypothetical experiment. This is true for the lab and and especially in the in, in the field, which is a very important uh, conclusion. And we also find that risk payment may lead to different measurement compared to incentivized decision, especially in the field. And we also find that hypothetical time preferences are robust to different within, uh, within task order and to whether to add other tasks uh, were incentivized or not. So thank you very much and comment are welcome.